There's a new book out about Goldman Sachs, Money and Power, How Goldman Sachs Came to Rule the World. It's by Bill Cohen, our friend and contributing editor right here at Bloomberg. Bill, like so many of us, was struck by how well Goldman Sachs did during the financial crisis. So he spent almost two years studying the firm, talking to CEO Lloyd Blankfein and all of his living predecessors. Now, if anything, Goldman emerged from the crisis a stronger firm. So I asked Bill whether Goldman's success is something to admire. I think in the same way that you would admire a scorpion as a killing machine. It's sort of the perfect, simple, small embodiment of the ultimate killing machine. Ruthless, without remorse, Goldman Sachs is the perfect embodiment, the ultimate evolution of the, of the Wall Street you know, shark that moves forward and always figures out a way to land on its feet. An evolutionary marvel. Perfectly evolved to adapt to what we prize so much in this country is, is you know, often, you know, profitability, we, you know, we revere billionaires, you know, all the things that we seem to favor. I mean, Goldman Sachs is a perfect reflection of who we are as a society. Whether you like it or not, they really are the perfect organization, the organization that reflects most perfectly who we are as a people at this particular moment. Do you ever think Goldman Sachs will have its comeuppance? Do you ever think an episode like the uh, Goldman Sachs Trading Corporation or the Penn Central bankruptcy or the massive losses Goldman was hemorrhaging in the 1990s in no. bond trading will ever come to visit the firm in such a way that it faces a mortal crisis once again? An existential crisis. You know, with $72 billion of capital at the moment, uh, with access to the Fed window, with being too big to fail, with certainly being on the list of being too big to fail, with being so central to the way capitalism works, you, you, you can't have capitalism without capital. You can't have capitalism without Goldman Sachs. Uh, uh, I, I mean, look. It sounds it, like no. The, the, the answer is basically no, unless they, the firm as a whole is indicted. I mean, you know, if, 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 that's the, if that's it's a criminal enterprise, uh, which some people may consider it to be, uh, you know, I spent time talking to, to, to Elliot Spitzer, who was certainly in a position to prosecute the firm in the, in the early part of this, uh, the 2000s. He certainly found a lot wrong there. People have always accused of, of Goldman Sachs of front-running its clients. But as, as Elliot told me, there, there's really no evidence. If there were, he would have used that evidence and prosecuted them. But short of a criminal enterprise, I think, you know, we've got to get used to Goldman Sachs being around for a long time. So after the space of just about two years, how do you feel about Goldman Sachs? Do you like the firm more or do you like the firm less than you did in the summer of 2009? Hmm. I no longer uh, sort of blindly admire the firm as I did when I was a banker. Uh, I have been fascinated by the interesting people I have met there. There is a, a real collection of very interesting people. I think the culture is a little dangerous. I think the culture and, and, and what they embody uh, uh, is, is a little bit too much uh, skewed toward their self-interest. I think they need to really step back in a way that you know, I don't even think this report that they released in January even begins to do, uh, and reflect on uh, you know, what they want to be and, and, and how they're going to meet uh, the United States uh, economy and, and our society. Because, because they attract the best and the brightest people from, from our top schools continuously, I think they have an extra obligation to make sure that their ethics are abo above reproach.